What's up, people? It's your belief, and in this video today, we're going to be talking about how to be a better sniper in Battlefield 2042. Uh, right now, we are just playing the beta, but sniping in this game is not easy. I'll tell you guys this right now. And I'm just going to give you guys some tips about how to be the most effective sniper uh, in general and how I personally like to have fun sniping in Battlefield. So let's go ahead and start out with the specialist. So my personal favorite is Boris, but we're going to first talk about the other three specialists. Here we have McKay and he has the grappling hook. I know a lot of people like playing McKay, but the thing is he's really good to get into power positions, like on top of tall buildings or something. But... The thing is you're sniping and once you get on top of that building it's not too long until a good pilot comes around and just shoots you off on top of a building so i definitely don't recommend using mckay mckay's really good for assault rifles or submachine guns and you can play aggressive and get on top of roofs to kill anybody that's actually camping on top of there but i wouldn't recommend mckay if you're trying to snipe in battlefield and then other people will try to play Casper, but honestly, Casper sucks, okay? The best thing about Casper is the fact that he has a ghillie suit. But besides that, I personally, when every time I use his drone, I have not EMP'd anything, even though that's what it's supposed to be used for. And you could scout ahead, but the thing is you're sniping, so you could just kind of take your time and figure out what's happening. If they buff Casper in the final version of the game, where you're actually able to see enemies in your drone and then once you leave your drone there's still red dots on the map then i would definitely definitely like think about choosing casper but as of right now casper is not it okay and then last but not least is the medic chick i still can't say this freaking lady's name but i definitely don't recommend you playing her because what makes her good is she's a support role and playing up close with your teammates and being able to res your teammates or your team that's why she's good, but if you are if you have a sniper rifle, it's definitely not good up close and personal and close quarter combat. So I definitely don't recommend playing her. Now, to my boy, Boris. The reason why I love playing Boris, and even if I'm not sniping, I'm playing Boris. And the reason why is the freaking sentry gun, okay? It's not even the fact that it shoots bullets. It doesn't even need to shoot bullets, and that's totally fine by me. The reason why I like playing Boris is just because the sentry gun highlights the, the, the enemy. Like the, it gives him a nice little red outline and you can see him through walls occasionally. And it's, it's great because what you could do with Boris and the sentry gun is put the sentry in a different portion of the objective and then rotate to either the left or right side that still has cover. And then use that sentry as intel when it's highlighting enemies to snipe them while they're looking at another objective or while they're looking at your sentry gun thinking that your sentry gun is actually one of your squad mates or something so basically when you have boris you essentially have two people and you know the other one's giving you call outs the whole time so boris is definitely my go-to guy for sniping or just playing in general in battlefield 2042 and then for my primary, of course, we're running the SWS-10. It's the only sniper rifle in the beta currently. Hopefully they do add more sniper rifles. I'm assuming they're going to. I'm pretty sure there's going to be a semi. Hopefully there's going to be a nice, like, high caliber 50 cal or something that you could definitely damage helicopters. That'd be dope. And then the secondary, I'm going to be running the G57. I like this one a lot better than the revolver. The revolver's nice, but the issue with the revolver, game's about to end. All right, like I was gonna say before that game ended, I like running the G57 because the G57 is a lot more reliable than the revolver. Um, and plus you can actually hit fire the G57 pretty freaking well. So you don't really have to ADS. Compared to the revolver, you're gonna have to ADS just because you know you need that one shot headshot. It's either that or you need a two tap, but then the gun shoots so slow. I definitely recommend you running the G57. Uh, I'm excited for the main game. I'm assuming there's going to have to be like a three burst pistol or something or like a semi-auto. That'd be nice to have as a secondary and be able to put on a silencer would be great. Would be freaking great. And then for the throwables, we're running the frag grenade. We're not running the proximity. Yeah, thank you, sir. We're not running the proximity sensor just because uh, having the red dots on your map is nice. But then you have your sentry gun already because you're playing Boris. So definitely use the frag grenades plus the frag grenade has no icon and it does a lot of damage so if you throw it they're not even gonna really realize that you threw a nade at them and then you either get a kill or put them really really low and the last thing is 
to run the ammo crate. You can run anti-air if there's really annoying people around, but if you're trying to snipe and be very efficient with it, the thing about this is you're going to be holding certain objectives or like the outside of certain objectives. And by having an ammo crate, it's nice because I'm not going to lie to you guys, sniping this game is not easy because you have to lead your shots and everything. So you're going to be missing a lot of shots. It's nice to have this ammo crate next to you to just replenish your ammo. But you can run the anti-missile or whatever you want. I highly recommend running the ammo crate. All right. And then let me go ahead and show you guys what I like to run on my sniper rifle. This is, I mean, I don't know why you want to run anything else. So you want to run the six times. The, f the reason why I like running the six time is because the crosshairs are nice. But the four time... The crosshairs are so weird looking. I, I'm not a big fan of it. So I always run the six times. And then um, here we have for the barrels, we have the vertical recoil control, which, which we don't need because I mean, okay, so that's, that's how it looks like. And without it, I mean, it looks kind of like the same to me, honestly, but run the suppressor okay because the suppressor if you run the suppressor you won't be shown on the map which is exactly what you need because you're going to be holding certain angles uh, around objectives you don't want to blow your cover where you are because you already have your sentry turret that's going to be helping you um you know highlight enemies and kind of be a distraction and have some pressure on your enemies while you're sniping in the back with this sniper rifle that's suppressed that they won't know where you are so run this thing instead i know you get a minus five to your firepower but i mean you're heading you're supposed to hit headshots anyways because even without this it's still going to be a two shot kill um so i say just run the suppressor there's no reason not to run it and then the visual impairment this thing is useless i see this thing a lot on other guns but i just go ahead and run the foregrip because why the hell not uh it only helps if you're standing still I definitely recommend you standing still just right before you start shooting, but I would definitely just run the grip because there's no reason to run this visual impairment thing here, the flashlight. And then for the magazine, I just run the regular mags. You can't, there's no point of running the close combat mags because you're not fighting up close. So I would definitely not recommend running these. And I mean, I, I don't understand why they even have this in here for, for you to use. It doesn't seem that great. But let's go ahead and look at some of my gameplay and I kind of show you guys my thought process about sniping in Battlefield. All right, so in this gameplay right here, I'm gonna be showing you guys how to play aggressively and efficiently with the sniper rifle. So we've taken the skyscraper on the right there, which is, uh, I think, I believe the B flag. And I'm pushing up to the C point right here to try to hold it for as long as I can until my enemy or until my teammates start pushing up. Um, so like I said, I know no one's here with me, so I'm going to push up. And right here's a good example of how good the Glock is over the revolver because I was at a, I was able to hit fire, miss some of my shots, but still beat that guy with his like AR or something. And then right here, I got a nice little shot from afar, but this guy right here was half health. And that was the reason why I got this kill right here, because if, if I shot this, and he was full health, he would have been alive because that was like a shoulder shot. So sniping in this game, you got to make sure you lead your shots because it takes a while for your bullets to hit him. And if you don't hit a headshot, you're not going to get a kill. And on this left here, I was able to snipe that guy right there. And like I said, it, even at that, at that range, it's not hit scan. So you definitely have to make sure that your shot is on point. And the only reason why I was able to get that kill was because he was sniping too. And he had that like flashlight look. So luckily, he, if he had an AR and he was able to strafe better left and right, I would have definitely not get that kill. Right here, we put the sentry turret in this location. The reason why I like putting the sentry turret in this location is currently in the beta, if you spawn on this flag, you end up spawning behind these palm trees or this big tree right in front of this turret. And when they spawn, the turret will automatically highlight one person, one person at a time. It gives me the ability to know where all the enemies are freaking coming from. So I'm not surrounded and I, I hide behind this hill because it gives me a nice cover. So I'm gonna miss a few shots here because like I said, I'm, I'm not the greatest at sniping and sniping this game is pretty difficult, but as you can see, he ran inside the building, but the tur turret was still highlighting him, which is really nice. And like they're spawning all over on this side and you always got to make sure you have the ability to back up. 
Um, like I said, I'm holding this point. It's me, my turret on this bottom left corner, and one dude on this right hand side. So my objective is not to take the objective by myself. My goal is just to make sure I hold out as long as I can until you know some of my teammates come back or we slowly just keep killing everyone and then something will happen, you know, and just kind of have fun while we're at it. So here I miss a lot of shots, but I'm going to show you guys just how good these nades are and how bad they are at the same time. So I threw a nade there, but there is no grenade indication. So there, so if they throw it, you don't know that it's actually right next to you unless you see it bounce. So I throw this way and I hit him. And if you look at his health, his health is about 45%. This is why having nades over the proximity proximity nades are a lot better because now I could just hit fire and get this kill. So it's really nice uh, to use nades. And then my goal here, like I said, is just to hold this position until we could get some more teammates coming down to help us out. And I got a nice little snipe there. So I hope you guys enjoy my little explanation about why you guys should use Boris and how to use Boris's kit with sniping to actually, you know, be a little more effective than just sitting on top of a skyscraper and shooting people at like 400 yards away or whatever. I mean, if you want to do that, that's totally fine. I, I, I kind of want to be in the action and still snipe at the same time, which is why. Yeah, this is my play style. And I just want to give you guys a little explanation about how I play. And maybe you guys can give it a try and see if you guys like it as well. It is definitely frustrating because sniping is not the easiest. Look at how many shots I missed in this guy. Look at how mad that guy had to be. But sniping is not the easiest in this game. I'm not going to lie. And I played a lot of games to figure out the stupid bullet drop and all that other stuff. And I'm still missing my shots. It's hard for me to still hit all my shots. But give it a try. If you guys like this video, do me a favor, smash that like button. Hit that subscribe button if you guys want to see more Battlefield 2042 content. I'm not too sure what to do with this, with my channel, what to upload next once the beta is done. Maybe go back to Battlefield 5 or something and just snipe there. Um, I'm not too sure yet. But if you guys want to see something else, let me know in the comments, uh, like other games or something, and I'll try to play that too when Battlefield is done. But I hope you guys enjoy it. I'll see you guys next time. Have an amazing day. Enjoy Battlefield 2042 because Battlefield is almost over, boys. Two more days until this thing is over. Maybe one more day for you guys when you guys see this. But have fun. Enjoy yourself. I'll see you guys next time. Peace.